I'm always delighted to be with Solomon News. This has been such a leader in the conservative movement and the Republican Party. Welcome to the Saul's Newsstand News Rewind for November 3rd, 2023. ABC News reports, Biden's handling of Israel-Hamas war faces criticism from some Democrats. President Joe Biden is facing increasingly vocal opposition from a group inside his own party on what they suggest is his bias toward Israel and against Palestinians following the Hamas terrorist attack on Israel. Biden has offered full support for Israel as the war with Hamas rages on in the Middle East, yet several members of the Democrat progressive wing, including Representatives Rashida Tlaib of Michigan and Ilan Omar of Minnesota, have criticized his approach. Many Democrats are deviating from Biden when it comes to a call for a ceasefire as Israeli ground forces push deeper into Gaza. Representative Pramila J. Paul, a Democrat from Washington, an ardent Biden supporter, said she is uneasy about the president's attitude toward Israel. More than a dozen lawmakers introduced a resolution that urged the Biden administration to, quote, call for an immediate de-escalation and ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine to send humanitarian aid and assistance to Gaza and to save as many lives as possible. The intraparty divide comes as Biden's 2024 presidential campaign ramps up and he works to present himself as a tested leader on the global stage and one with his own party support. Just the News reports, Jim Jordan demands big tech turnover records of unacceptable DOJ surveillance targeting Congress. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan on Tuesday demanded America's big tech companies turn over any records showing the Justice Department's efforts to surveil or spy on congressional lawmakers or their staff. Jordan's letters to the CEOs of Google's parent company Alphabet, Apple, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon came a week after Just the News disclosed that as many as a dozen or more lawmakers and congressional investigators, both Republican and Democrat, had received belated notifications their personal email and phone records had been seized by a grand jury subpoena six years ago. The targeted staffers include people who worked for the Senate Judiciary and House Intelligence Committees, who have direct oversight responsibility for the FBI and the Justice Department, raising concerns that the legislative branch overseers were being monitored by those they oversee in the executive branch. And finally, Axios reports, Democrats quietly move to succeed Biden. Democratic governors and senators are quietly moving to boost their national profiles and position themselves to run for president in 2028 or in 2024 if President Biden unexpectedly drops out. In recent months, more than half a dozen Democratic lawmakers have established national political organizations, embarked on resume-building foreign trips, and visited states that traditionally hold early presidential primaries. President Biden, who would be 86 at the end of his second term, has released a report from his doctor that he is in good health for a man of his age and has said that he's focused on winning re-election. This week, we'll let common sense have the last word. I never dreamed that I would have to face the prospect of not living in the United States of America, at least not the one I've known all my life. I've never wished to live anywhere else. This is my home, and I was privileged to be born here. But today I woke up, and as I had my morning coffee, I realized that everything is about to change. No matter how I vote, no matter what, I say something evil has invaded our nation, and our lives are never going to be the same. I've been confused by the hostility of family and friends. I look at people I've known all my life, so hate-filled that they agree with opinions they would never express as their own. I think I may have, well, entered the twilight zone. We've become a nation that has lost its collective mind. You can't justify this insanity. If a guy pretends to be a woman, you're required to pretend with him. Somehow, it's un-American for the census to count how many Americans are in America. Russians influencing our elections are bad, but illegals voting in our elections are good. It was cool for Joe Biden to blackmail the president of Ukraine, but it's an impeachable offense if Donald Trump inquires about it. 
20 is too young to drink a beer, but 18 is old enough to vote. People who have never owned slaves should pay slavery reparations to people who have never been slaves. People who have never been to college should pay the debts of college students who took out huge loans for their degrees. Immigrants with tuberculosis and polio are welcome, but you'd better be able to prove your dog is vaccinated. Irish doctors and German engineers who want to immigrate to the U.S. must go through a rigorous vetting process, but any illiterate gangbangers who jump the southern fence are welcome. $5 billion for border security is too expensive, but $1.5 trillion for free health care is not. If you cheat to get into college, you go to prison, but if you cheat to get into the country, you go to college for free. People who say there is no such thing as gender are demanding a female president. We see other countries going socialist and collapsing, but it seems like a great plan to us. Some people are held responsible for things that happened before they were born, and other people are not held responsible for what they're doing right now. Criminals are caught and released to hurt more people, but stopping them is bad because it's a violation of their rights. And pointing out all this hypocrisy somehow makes us racist. Nothing makes sense anymore. No values, no morals, and no civility. People are dying of a Chinese virus, but it's racist to refer to it as Chinese even though it began in China. We're clearly living in an upside down world where right is wrong and wrong is right, where moral is immoral and immoral is moral, where good is evil and evil is good, where killing murderers is wrong, but killing unborn babies is A-OK. -okay. Wake up, America. The great unsinkable ship, Titanic America, has it in, hit an iceberg, is taking on water, and is sinking fast. Speak up. And that concludes your Saul's Newsstand News Rewind for November the 3rd, 2023. For more political news faster, visit saulsnews.com.